Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector. And uh, it's been a while since I made a video. I realize uh, uh, it's been quite a while, but um, I've been traveling. I had some uh, family things to take care of. My mom passed a few weeks ago. I had to fly to Michigan to go to her memorial service. And then we had our 45th class reunion uh, up in Ohio. And uh, that was a lot of fun, but we went to, uh, we had to travel to do that. And uh, I feel so sorry for all those people. They've gotten a lot older, and I still look the same as I did in high school, which so that's kind of bad for them. But um, we then had to travel and stay with my daughter, my grandson, and my sister. So we've been all over the place, and I haven't really had time to um, uh, get a video done. But uh, I promised as soon as I got home I would do one. And uh, we just got done playing Altiplano for the second time. And Altiplano is a game by Reiner Stockhausen. And he was the designer of Orleone. Those of you who play board games are very familiar with Orleone. A wonderful bag builder. And in Altiplano, which came out in 2018, uh, it's also a bag builder. Now, I didn't uh, buy this game right away, to be quite honest with you, because, uh, I don't know, a couple reasons. I didn't like the box. <laughs> I know that sounds really stupid, but I didn't like the box. Uh, um, you think that 63 years old, you wouldn't be so shallow. But I looked at it and said, ah, this guy a... What is that thing, uh, you know, whatever that thing is on the alpaca on the cover, or a llama, I thought it was a llama, but I didn't, I didn't uh, uh, really want to get the game. And then I watched it played a few times online, and, and, uh, and of course, Reiner Stockhausen's Orleone is uh, probably going to be in the uh, Bones Collector Hall of Fame. And uh, so the guy's an excellent board game designer, and um, so I thought I'd get the game, and I picked it up used, and uh, um, very, uh, you know, inexpensively. And that's the way I like to, to live. So I picked it up used, and uh, some of the tokens that had been punched out rather aggressively, and they were separating and stuff. So as you see on the these boards here, they've got plastic uh, little plastic containers. We put them in to protect them a little bit. But the game is absolutely wonderful. Um, we've played it twice now. Um, it's an excellent, excellent. Um, uh, bag building game. Now by bag builder, those, for those of you that don't know what that is, you're simply, uh, what do I do with my, you're simply putting, purchasing these to tokens or getting them in, in uh, resource exchange or various ways and, uh, and putting them in this bag and you're going to draw them out and plan uh, your movement and how to use them uh, on these locations out here. Um, so yeah, um, you get to use every one of them too. Unlike Orleone. In Orleone, when you're building in your bag, you're gonna draw some of those out and you get to use the ones you draw out, but they go back in there. And so you may draw the same ones out and there's some you may not see very often because of that. But in this one, he did a little bit different. Once you use your tokens, uh, wherever you happen to use them on your board, then you're gonna put them in your a little bin here like that after you've used them and then you'll draw more tokens out of your bag place them on your player board and once you use them they go back in here when the bags empty these tokens get dumped back into this bag so eventually you're gonna see all your tokens which is very important and it's very unique and different uh, different than Orleans. is it better than Orleans? I mean I, I don't think so I, it, I like it um, a lot, and I like it. Do I like it as much as Orleone? <sighs> Man, that's a tough question. Orleone is kind of a classic. It's become a classic, even though it, uh, I think it's only been out since 14. So uh, it hasn't been around a long, long time, but it's become a classic. And uh, I really, really love Orleone's, but I love Altiplano too, and I'm gonna keep this game because it's incredible. You're simply, and the game is very simple. Um, you have to um, draw those tokens out of your bag, place them in this planning area down here, you're only allowed so many uh, to begin the game, and then you're going to put them on your player board in various locations on your player board uh, to determine what you want to do. And um, then you have to move your avatar to that location that corresponds with a location on your player board to take that action. And you're going to, again, be re uh, exchanging resources to get better resources. You're going to be uh, able to go to this market space uh, and buy um, some extension tiles that, again, ramp up your ability to get resources and money. And, uh, and it just keeps going and going and going 
just like a good deck builder does. And it just keeps ramping up and ramping up and ramping up to the very end. And um, it, it's, it's a game that's very complex. In the, when you play this game, you have to take what it gives you. You can't do it all in this game. And I love games like that. Um, if, if you play against an opponent who tries to get everything done, a little bit of everything, you're probably going to beat them. Uh, you have to take what this game gives you. And it starts out with this uh, small square tile. Uh, this, this is an extension for your player board that you begin the game with. And on it, it gives you your beginning resources, but it also gives you a place to put a token. In this case, I was able to, this, this was a food token. Once I place a food token on that board, I uh, would get an alpaca token, okay? And then the alpaca tokens on my player board can turn into food. And if I place a, an alpaca and a food, I can get a, a, a wool token, which are worth points and which you can then eventually get cloth. So you have, this is very important to determine what direction you're gonna go in uh, during the game when it starts. And uh, I like games like that to give you a little bit of an idea about where you want to go. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And they're all different. All these role-playing tiles are different that, uh, that you're going to get to begin the game. So that you immediately, in your mind, have to look at your player board, look at that uh, beginning tile, and see, okay, if I get those, if I get wool, if I get cloth, I can turn those into other things, and blah, 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 and just goes on and on and on. But you can't do everything. So you have to decide what you're going to do. Um, I, I don't think during this game I did anything with fish. I, I, absolutely, I didn't even have a fish token. But it's on your player board, and if uh, another player gets that beginning tile that gives them fish, well, they're going to start doing things with fish. And, uh, and it's the person that plans the best in this game that's going to do the best. And by planning, I mean you're going to have to, you have to plan your movement as well as your player board uh, coordinating with the locations so that when you start the movement out maybe you ended your movement over here on the market well then when you're doing your planning you want to be uh, do something at the market before you have to move so when you draw your tokens out of your bag you're gonna place them on your board and the first thing you want to think about is can I do anything at the market before I leave and uh, that's very very important that you're able to do that so that the turn before that, when you were finishing up your turn on your last location, you have to plan to go to your location last that you can do first when you start your next turn. So I just um, that's very, very important in the movement and how you plan it. And uh, to move, you have to have carts, and it costs you food to move. So uh, you have to, when you have a cart with food, you can move three. And then you're allowed one movement for food that only moves one space. So in my case I had two carts and then uh, um, which allowed me to move one to three spaces and then for my last cart I could just put a food on it and move one space. So that if I wanted to uh, maybe go to the pat uh, or the road they call it then I want would want maybe to end up here and then with my last one movement I would go there and spend it and then at the beginning of my next turn hopefully I can do that again. So that's your movement planning is very important uh, as well as what you're doing on your player board to do resource exchange. And um, man, it's really, really a great game. You're going, you have a warehouse where you can start storing uh, extra goods as you receive them and that's a delicate balance too because once you start building up all these tokens uh, you have to ask yourself can I live without them and put them in my warehouse to score points now that I have a lot of them or can I go here to the market and buy a contract and you can see on the contracts they have various um, resources that it takes to complete them and some of them have huge points this one's worth 19 points if you can put a water a silver and a cacao on there you get 19 points and I think that is really really a lot of points in this game I think 20 points is about all I've seen uh, that you can score so but 19 points would be a whole lot of points and there's contracts that you can buy for a dollar when you go to the market and um, and and when you complete those contracts the tokens you put on there 
they don't count anymore as far as points at the end of the game but you get a lot of points for completing the contract but in the warehouse now if when you put uh, tokens in the warehouse and you complete whole rows you get bonus points for that and your tokens your token points still count also and they give you this little handy dandy aid that you can lay by your board and it tells you exactly how many points each token is worth um, so that you don't uh, to help you plan and you don't do uh, get rid of something that's worth a lot of a lot of points so yeah that's Altiplano I really really like this game again it's uh, many paths to victory I mean you, you can you can choose so many different things to do but you can't do it all and I love games like that there's a beauty to that uh, so and when I play this game um, I just let it come to me you have to uh, again look at that beginning tile that's given to you and start planning about how you're going to uh, parlay that into something bigger and bigger and bigger as the game goes on and then hope and pray that you got enough points at the end of the game to pull out the victory but hey the object is to win the game the reason when you play board games is to have a great time and Altiplano delivers in spades man it's a great game um, I I mean, I immediately knew that I was going to uh, not only keep it, but uh, I'm in love with it. It's wonderful. I, I hope uh, all of you that haven't tried it have an opportunity to play it. Maybe at your local game store, or I mean, these game store um, game cafes are popping up all over the place. It's board game cafes, but go in and play this game. I think you'll fall in love with it. And it's got a really, really cool first player token, the uh, uh, the dreaded alpaca. So that's pretty neat. I really like that. And. Um, yeah, this game is well designed. Reiner Stockhouse knocked it out of the park with this game, as he did with Orleone. I love them both. Um, I've seen people compare them online and then say, well, they would get rid of Orleone for Altiplano and vice versa. And I, I don't think that's necessary. They're both different enough that, um, and the themes are different enough that um, uh, you can have fun and, and enjoy them for many, many years. And uh, so that's Altiplano. And hey, that's it for this video. Uh, make sure, please, that you like and subscribe. And happy gaming. Um, it's the greatest hobby on the planet Earth. And I love it. And I hope you guys get into it too and enjoy it. And I love every one of you. Thank you. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.